Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 592nd episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we've got my old neighbor, Danielle Iman. Our kids grew up together, played together a little bit. Uh, we moved a few miles away. Uh, kids went to different schools. Uh, we've always stayed kind of in touch, certainly connected on social media. Um, she went through some crap, and um, she shares that story, how she hit rock bottom, how she turned it around, built it back, built it back better, bigger, stronger. And um, so you're in for a treat, and I just interviewed her today. So uh, I was going to do a book review. I just fell behind, so um, the timing worked out well. Uh, get this published right away. Um, the you know She's pretty raw, pretty honest. We go over an hour. Uh, we cover a lot of things, uh, her business, uh, my take on uh, my understanding of what it is that she does. Uh, but then we get into pricing, um, how she's growing, uh, so all kind of stuff. So get ready, right? Stay tuned. Uh, and because we're doing this right away, the copywriting training is still going. So copybywest.com, February 2nd. Uh, even if you cannot make it live, um, you can sign up and get the recordings and join in the month of support that is included. Uh, the price has gone up, but for $50, you can bring a guest. So it's basically, if you get them to, to pay half, it's still the same price per person. So copybywest.com, uh, full day of training. It'll be recorded, then a month to help you apply this to your sales. It's not going to make you a you know top-tier, A-level, A-lister copywriter, uh, but if you're in sales, it will tighten up your communication, and I guarantee you will be more confident when you write. Uh, you'll be more effective, and because everything we do, um, even we, you see videos, yeah, people get good at them. They can just hit record, uh, but a lot of people, at a minimum, they're outlining things, thinking through the process, thinking through who they're going to connect with. So um, this copywriting, how I get you to think and analyze and research and prepare. Um, a lot of little tips, things I've done for 25 years now and, and counting um, that'll help you sell. Okay, so join us, copybywest.com. If you need some on-demand training for sales, check it out. It is makeeverysale.com. You've heard that many times before. Uh, our live calls are at gorillasofgrowth.com and you get the Make Every Sale program as a part of that. You can join quarterly. You can join for a year. It's up to you. Just join. Grow. All right? 2023, I think it's going to be a tough year for a lot of people. But when you know how to communicate, when you know how to market, when you know how to sell, you can make money and grow in any economy. And a lot of times in a down economy, you can um, expand. You can extend your influence. You can grow your market share. So then when things do rebound, um, you get the lion's share of it. So do not hunker down into a recession. Double down. All right? Invest in yourself. You will win. Now, let's bring on Danielle. Danielle, I'm in my neighbor. I mean, if if you liked me more, we could have done this in person. But, you know, I, I know I'm a little crazy and you need to keep the distance. So you got to stay home. I appreciate it, though. But thanks for carving out some time and coming on the sales <laughs> podcast. How the heck are you? Oh, wonderful, Wes. I'd love to be here. I mean, I'm, I was shocked that you reach out. I was like, that'll be cool. We'll Come reconnect. On. What do you mean shocked? We've known each other forever. Our kids go to school together, went to school. They're all, we're getting old. I got two yeah. kids that got married this summer. What's up with that? Yeah. Them? Oh, man. No. Are, are we that old? that old, are they? Are we that, are we that old? I don't know. Yeah, that makes me feel, that makes me feel like, wow. Well, my boys are, um, they're not even thinking about marriage. <laughs> well, Matthew married his high school sweetheart, but Jake's my oldest. He's he's dating a girl, but he's like, yeah, I'm not too sure about this whole marriage stuff. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's like, wait as long as you can to figure out if the marriage thing is forever for you. Wait as long as you can. Yeah. Well, Jake's waiting. At least did not. They dated a year and a half. Had a one year. No, not even a one year. They got, they got engaged. So both my kids got engaged within within 72 hours of each other over Christmas. Wow. They got, they got married in June. Bam. In September. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. 
That's a lot. It so, changes so see, you. I don't feel that change, but uh, it changes them, right? You that, get married. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. When you get married, like, woo, then you have kids. So I think I can, <clears throat> if I whisper, because I'm a sales whisperer, if I whisper this, I think I can say this. Because Matthew and Holly, they just, they literally flew today to the East Coast. But I think they already told, they were holding off telling their family the news that they're pregnant. Oh, wow. Congrats. But they don't listen to my podcast, so they won't know that I mentioned <laughs> So this is the first we've had to be quiet because they were waiting to do it in person. But then, <laughs> but then they told us, oh, we kind of told everybody this week. Like, <laughs> like I've been biting That's my not tongue. It's really a like, secret. Yeah. <laughs> I've been biting my tongue for like three weeks. Well, but uh, they did. They, we did wait a few weeks. So Yeah. Well, the word will fun, start to, to be out public uh, on the socials uh, this yeah. week. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's so funny, right? I go, Grandpa, I'm like. My my brother in law is only six months older than me, but he's got four grandkids. I'm like, this will be our first. Like, I don't yeah. know. I don't. I don't feel like a grandpa. That's for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How fun though. So so here we go. Yeah. So your website talking about money meditation. I need. I got weddings. I got grandkids. I need more money. Can can yeah. you help me? To, can I meditate and get money, or do I have to take some action? You know what's funny is. Um, <laughs> People will still say to me, you know, I don't even know how to meditate. And I take it for granted that like, it's just who I am, I guess, walking meditation that, yeah. I don't think I do. You may, might be surprised. Okay. You might be surprised. I mean, when I first started really sitting and just listening, because that's what meditation is. It's like, okay, I'm just going to shut the F up and I'm going to listen. I'm just going to listen and see what's going on. It took me a good three years to like start hearing like, okay, that doesn't sound like a critical thought, a mean thought, like that actually sounds like it's maybe not me. Like it's, there's somebody there trying to help me, but for a while in the beginning, it's a lot of noise, but it's just sitting quietly and allowing thoughts without action on the thought. And that's why people have a hard time just sitting in quiet and stillness is because we think we have to take action on every damn thought that comes through that makes us feel something. And that's not how it works. Money yeah. doesn't come when you do that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you get spread too thin. People don't realize to be successful, you got to focus. Yeah, you, it's a discipline. You know, I've got a friend, like he literally, like every week he's texting me with some harebrained idea and I just bust his ass and, and he recognized it. Hey, Wes, thanks for the tough love. I'm like, dude, no. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm like, go back six months, scroll up six months ago in this text <laughs> thread, go back to what I told you to do six months ago. You didn't do that. Yeah. You know? He, he messaged me like, like literally two weeks ago on uh Jordan Belford, the, the wolf of wall street. Remember him? Yep. So entertaining movie, the guy obviously knew how to sell, but he, he was a manipulator, right? And I still don't trust the guy. You can learn from him still. Right, I've right. read his stuff. He, there are actionable things, but I'm like, I'm like, he, the, my buddy bought my sales training course, makeeverysale.com. It's patiently waiting for you on the web. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> he bought my course. I'm like, did you finish my course? He's like. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll go log back into that. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. When you said I was talking to a buddy, he's like, I don't, I don't give anybody any advice unless they've paid me. Yeah. I made them buy it. Yeah. People do not pay attention to anything unless they've paid for it. And even then, yeah. like everyone has a threshold, you know, you know what I mean? Like everyone has a threshold to where they're like, well, that was an expensive course. <laughs> but that threshold is different for every single person. Like your $2,000 course, maybe that person who spent the two grand was like, that was a lot of money for me. I'm going to go in and get everything I can out of that investment I made. And other people, four, six grand, it, they still don't finish it. It's, I don't even know what that is. I think that's a, that's like a, um, have I hit enough bottoms in my life? <laughs> to actually pay attention to what I'm spending my money on. Yeah. I, hey, I had the same realization. You know, they'll say, you know, in sales, I'm always thinking of the objection, right? Well, that's expensive. I'm like, yeah, compared to, compared to what? 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not going to explain myself to you, right? You need to explain yourself to me. Yeah. Uh, but I realize I have bought tickets. I've gone to conferences, not gotten things out of it, gotten great ideas, filled up notebooks. The notebook is sitting in my closet, collecting dust and cobwebs. So it's like they delivered. Right. right. They said, here's a conference. You're going yeah. to get great information for one, two, three days, 40. Okay. And I got great information. Yeah. Okay. Now it's on yeah. me to go apply it. And so now I don't feel bad. You want to buy, I sell my course now, Gorillas of Growth, gorillasofgrowth.com. But anyway, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. People buy and they don't show up. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that is the one thing. Um, we talk about all the time over here is how to get people to take action. And the truth about it is, is you can't make anyone take action. So I have I do this little experiment because yes, in meditation, you connect, you connect to call it whatever you want to call it, source, God, universe, energy, you connect with something outside of you. And that energy cannot do anything unless you the physical human being go and take action on it period and that requires you to get out of your own way over and over and over again all right so what led you to that when did this yeah. three-year period begin yeah well <laughs> really I, I had no choice. Like I had been living this life as a registered nurse and thinking I was doing all the right things and wound up one day in a lawsuit with the place that I was working. And all of that was like to defend me, was to defend nurses and to defend the cause but really my life was taking like a plummet into places. I was like, whoa, this is scary. Losing, you know, my career, losing my family. Well, I had been divorced for a while, but my kids had stopped like hanging out with me. Um, and I was above anything else, even though I loved my job as a nurse, I was a mom. And when your children are starting to be like, I don't even like you, what is going on? That's when it got to the point for me where I was like, I got to take a look at something that I don't think I would have ever taken a look at if the you, I, I call source God universe. If the universe wouldn't have ripped out from me the life I thought I had control over, I don't know that I would have taken such a deep look. But it was about that time. It was well, it was about it was a little over three years ago. I've been doing this for five years of just deep, deep work and leveling myself out I, I joke like i spent three years in epsom salt baths just like okay <laughs> figuring it out forgiving myself for who i was and just healing i mean to sum up three years it was three years of truly healing mm -hmm. um and within that time i just noticed my kids started to actually hang around me more and i had found human design so I don't know, probably nobody knows what that is, but it's a system that combines astrology, energy. It's just a system of energy about your aura. And I found this through a podcast and I was like, I got to figure out what that is. I've always been into astrology. I've always been into like psychic readings and the energy from the beyond. And I thought I got to figure this out because it wouldn't have been brought to me if there wasn't something there. And I went down a rabbit hole and I figured out Every, like the way I had been, I found out why I had been the way I had been. I found out why I had gotten divorced. I found out what was in my future. I found out who I needed to be in order to get that future. I found out everything. And I just decided one day I'm not doing that the way I had been doing it. And I'm now following my design. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I do not know anything about human design. <laughs> yeah. Most people I don't. Not, I am not into astrology. I'm not into psychic energy. Uh, but I, I do believe in God. I do. I came from a scientific background. I do know that we are energy and the vibrations. I mean, there's, there's something to all that. Yeah, for uh, sure. 
for sure. Uh, so we overlap, you know, the Venn diagram, we, we got some overlap there. Yeah. We got some gaps, we got some overlap. <laughs> yeah. That's it, um, Wes. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're um, on the same page. You know what I'm talking about. So, and but I uh, walk me through that though. So the, I kind of remember, now you say it, I remember the lawsuit and stuff, but I don't, I don't remember all the details, but I remember like you, we may have even chatted a little bit. Maybe you were asking me some perspective, but um, did, did your kids not like you like, cause you like you were in battle and like you were like warrior person instead yeah. of, instead of mom. And then it kind of spilled over into no, your home life or, it, or what happened? It there? was who I was, who I was, was mean. I was loud. I was always. You know, there's lots of reasons why I was this way, but the truth about it was, was they couldn't be close to me because I was always trying to, the lawsuit's a big example of me trying to um, get justification for like who I was and what, what we were doing. And all of it didn't matter. And the person I was, was a, I, was a, I was fighting everybody. I was always fighting everybody and I never, because I was using all my energy to fight, I wasn't looking within. I wasn't going, wait a minute, why is there even a fight to be had in the first place? Yeah. It's like everybody else was just uncomfortable with, I was always in a fight. Did you ever see that movie, uh, Secretariat? No. Of course. Um, at, uh, uh, Jeff Bridges uh and uh oh the guy he played he played spider-man the, the the guy but uh he was the jockey oh toby mcguire yeah mcguire okay okay so in an early race so secretariat right like like most winning his horse blah 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 but she was she would she would finish strong whatever you know, they called it so she would hang way back so he's like stay back let her just get into the tempo and she'll finish strong. Right. Cause you know, like running, you know, if, if you go too fast, too soon, like you just, you, you know, you, you hit that wall and you can't finish. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's kind of, they're starting out and, and it was an early race. You're like, let's groom her. Let's, let's get some wins under our belt and then go to the big show. Right. And, but Toby Maguire, the character was always angry. Ah, right. And you got to watch this show. Okay, I am totally. At, at least look up the clip. It's easy to find on YouTube, <laughs> but you'll love the movie. But um, so he's in this race, and and another jockey comes in, like bumps him. It's called a foul, right? Because and got to remember, this was whatever eighty years ago, whenever it was, you know. So it's not like they had instant replay and drones and all this footage, right? So like, there's nobody to tell what's going on. You know, you're looking five hundred yards away. So he gets angry and, and just starts charging and, and jams that guy up. Oh, you like this? You like it? Jams him into the rail, you know? And so then the horse peters out and they don't win. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Bridges, you know, he's just the calm, you know, grandfatherly presence. And because the trainer and Toby are like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and he's like, he fouled me. What was I supposed to do? And he's like, both hands, you know, he's angry. He's like, he fouled me. And Jeff Bridges is calm. He says, son, why are you so angry? And it's just, that was it, right? Just, yeah. And then things changed. Yeah. Right. He, he had something to prove or whatever. But he's like, dude, you're, you're out of your mind. Yeah. Why are, you, why are you so angry? Yeah. That's what I thought of when you're yeah. telling me that story. Well, for sure, because it was life is happening to me. Everyone's doing something to me. I can't catch a break. My husband's an asshole. These kids are hard. Like my mom died. Like you name it. I was like, everything is happening to me and I just can't catch a break. People are mean to me at work and they're making me do illegal shit. You know, it's like, no, no. I mean, it took me three years to figure out that no. That wasn't it. Yeah. Yeah. And you um, know, all of that anger comes from like childhood shit that happens and 
you know, everyone has their own reasons for why, but the truth is everyone has reasons for why it doesn't matter and be the adult and start doing different. And so that's just what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I, I, that old adage, you know, the two twins, you know, and their dad was an alcoholic and abusive and blah, 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 died early. And, and one of the twins became an alcoholic and abusive and died early or, you know, was, was on a bad track. And the other one was like super successful. And they're like, what happened? And, you know, and the, the one with the issue said, my dad was an alcoholic. I didn't have a choice. And the successful guy goes, my dad was an alcoholic. I didn't have a choice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> Same situation, yeah. right? Just yeah. how do we apply? Um, so did you, did you find a mentor, a course, uh, a conference? Human design. I literally found human design. Like, like self-study, like just found yes. like kind of mentors online, think programs, well, things to read. In the beginning, it was just mentors online. Like I was just reading all the books and I'm not one to like, take what someone else says as gospel. I go into the primary teaching of these books sure. and I see how they apply to me. So that, that was like, I joke with my community. I'm like, stop getting certifications from everyone else. Go ahead and certify yourself. So that's what I did is I just spent all of my time certifying myself and who I was. Like, who is Danielle and how does she work? So it was, it was time away from society, really. It was, what is every, everyone, because my life had been built as to what my parents hey, thought. I'm not, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in tune with that. Just yeah. Away from society, but, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone for their own reasons, right? Stays away yeah. from society for whatever reason. But at that point, I was like, I can't listen to what like my mom and dad wanted me to be and who I was, what my ex-husband wanted me to be, what my kids wanted me. I had to figure out who is Danielle and what is she doing here first? And then what does she bring to the world? Like, there has to be a reason I'm here. There has to be a reason I've gone through what I've gone through. I'm never, I'm not going to sit in the victim of it any longer. Now, how do I get out of where I am? into a life I actually want to wake up in every day. If I have to be here, I got to figure out how to like it here. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And um, I guess it's safe to say a, a lot of shit changed for yeah. the better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, almost immediately the relationship with my daughter got way deeper. So um, Garrick and I had been divorced. Well, totally been divorced 10 years, but few years back. I don't know. What is that? Seven. I don't know. We'd been divorced and the, you know, dysfunction after a divorce really rippled through the family. We were a, I mean, in the kids stories, when they look back and talk about it now, we were the epitome of healthy family, but then overnight it was no longer, we're no longer a family. There's, um, a lot of alcohol use on both sides. So like toxicity and, the kids were just scared. They were like, we don't know what's going on. And our once happy family is like not any longer. So everyone went into this, you know, rippled effect of the divorce, like dysfunction basically. And when I did my, started on my healing journey, my daughter and I just glued back together. So I, I mean, she was about 13 or 14. And at that time, it was, it's like that age where they could go start drinking and hanging around the wrong people, or they actually don't and choose themselves. So that was a beautiful time in Chloe's life where the two of us just came back and were solid. And over the course of a couple of years, the kids, you know, cause Noah had gone to uh, take off on his own career of sales and marketing. And then Jaden had gone to Colorado to figure out what he wanted to do. And they would come back and visit. And then each time they would come back and visit, they would just say, this just feels different. Like you're, I like being around you. It's nice to be around you. You're not fighting with dad and dad's not fighting with you. And 
and dad's even enjoying hanging around you. It's like our family just feels nicer. So, so you that, were hanging out with your ex-husband? Yeah. So, well, not right away. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That didn't happen right away. Yeah. There was a, our divorce was very angry. Um, we were both mad at each other. Like now we know why we were just mad at each other for not making each other the priority at the time. Um, but we softened towards one another and that started because I softened. Like I was willing to just like, Hey, it's, it is what it is. We got divorced. Like it totally sucked. Wished it would have worked, but it's good. Like we at least can raise our children and be happy functioning adults separate, but together as a family. And so that he started coming back, hanging around us. I would say, well, so we're in 2022. So 20 from 2020 on, he would just start, you know, if the kids were hanging out, he'd stay for dinner. And then he even said, he's like, yeah, I just noticed it was just nicer. Right. He didn't have to be on the defensive with me all the time. Nice. Of course, there wasn't like there was never. And people ask me this all the time. Like, did you know you were going to get back together with your ex-husband? Never. Not one time. Never. Not one time. But all I knew then was if we can create a relationship where our children want to hang around us, then we've won. And mm-hmm. that was my number one goal. Right. It wasn't creating the business and creating the money. It was my number one goal was heal Danielle so that your children want to be around you. And if Garrick wants to hang around, fine. Of course, you know, he's the, you know, he's, I was married to him for 17 years. He's the, my children's father, but there was never a, oh, like a, like a master plan of this will, we will end up back together. Yeah. All right. We're gonna go down a rabbit hole. Uh oh. So walk me through that rekindling. How does that work? Is it just like the movies? Do y'all just like look lovingly into one another's eyes and realize, oh my gosh, come on. I, I, what was the first kiss like? Was it like the first, first kiss or was it like a new first kiss? I, I need to know these things. You know, it was um, Garrick and I's reconnection was. I mean, to best describe it, it was like, finally, we're home. Like, finally, we're home. And it's not a, um, it's not a, like, and I haven't dated in so long, but I can remember, like, those first few dates where you're like, I can't wait to say, what is, like, there's almost this anxious energy about it with Garrick. And it was like this when we first met, but it had just gotten lost. With Garrick, it's just, I'm home. I'm home. You're home. No one's going anywhere. We're not turning away from each other. It was that. I mean, I mean, it's not like something, to, it's not like on your romance novels or anything like that. It's just uh, a know. home. It's a safety. <laughs> you it's just a know. safety. Yeah. Yep. So y'all were married 17, divorced, what, 10 or 12? 10. Um, and then, and are y'all remarried? No, we haven't officially got remarried, but yeah, you could basically yeah. say it. Everyone moved back in with me um, in March of this year. Nice. The whole cool. family came back. They're like, we're leaving where we came. It sucks out there. We want to be back <laughs> with our family. Yeah. So you... So you stop being a nurse. Yeah. Right. So your job is gone. Your husband is gone. How are you putting food on the table? Yeah, Wes, that what I don't even know. Like when, when I look back, I'm like, how was I, how was I doing that? And I really couldn't even tell you because I don't, I don't really know, but I know that I was like, I knew I had child support and alimony from Garrick. Not a lot, but I was figuring that out. I had odd jobs. Like I was a waitress at BJ's for a few months. Um, in whatever way, shape, or form, I was figuring it out. I I couldn't tell you how I was doing it, but I was doing it. By the yeah. grace of God, I was doing it. Yeah. And so in the midst of all that, 
you you find this human design you start calming yourself is that a good word yeah i mean i would say yeah regulating myself is a really good word I started okay. regulating myself uh-huh uh i mean because now is it safe to say you're thriving is that an accurate oh, yeah word? yeah so that's a big that's a big switch yes um yeah. so walk me through that journey because like we talked about before we hit record you know like i i tell people i I help humans sell to humans. So I love the Phoenix rising from the ashes. You know, we, we always see stuff. We always see the beauty and the perfection online. Right? Yeah. Like I saw this meme the other day and, uh, and it's always women like that are just the wittiest and like, cause it was something like, Oh, your life looks so happy and perfect. And it's like, well, Susan, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to well, show Susan. you, I'm not going to show you about my, 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 uh, depression and an anxiety breakdown and drinking, you know, a bottle of yeah. wine, uh, alone in the bathroom, you know, I'm like, Damn. Yeah. I'm like, okay, fair point. Yeah. So, you know, to talk to somebody that I know that went through crap and rose up through it, you know, I want others to hear that yeah. because everybody's going through something right? There's always crap. You know, we got good crap, kids getting married, grand grandkids on the way, but my mother-in-law's husband last night, we put him on hospice. Yeah. You know? And so it's like the show must go on though, right? He's a former right. Marine, tough guy, retired cop. He doesn't want us moping, yeah. you know? And, um, and but we've dealt with dementia with him for many years. I mean, he doesn't know us. You know, so everybody, uh, but you know, like I've known him for 20 years, but still it's like through marriage and extension. So it's not my grandfather. It's not my father-in-law. There's a little bit of distance there. So, but people have crap going on in their lives, right? And got, got Thanksgiving coming up, Christmas. Unfortunately, we know a lot of people struggle on these times, right? So hearing your story, and this is a good time because we're going, I'll publish this one like immediately. So people are going to hear this maybe in yeah. time for Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, so how, walk us through that, that rise. Yeah. Well, like I said, started with me taking full responsibility for where I was in that moment. Now, and, let me interrupt you. Do you yeah. think that was because? Had you finally hit rock bottom? Did you need oh, yeah. to hit rock bottom and go, okay, well, I'm done blaming everybody. I think for me, holy I shit, had there's to. nobody left to blame. I guess it's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> Wait, the only one left is me. Hmm. Wow. I wonder what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me personally, and I mean, I work with a lot of women who kind of have the same thing, but I think for me personally, yeah, I had to hit like rock fucking bottom. And I'm when I say that, I mean money, love, I mean health. I was on tons of antidepressants, drinking a ton, a bottle at least a night of wine. Like it was bad. And it really did start with me saying, okay, wait a minute. The only one left here is me. Why? Let me figure that out and let me never stop figuring that out. So, I mean, over the course of, what, what is it, five, six, what is it, 47 now. So over the course of the last six years, I just decided to every day, how can I do better? How, how can I learn more? How can I do better? How can I help? How can I help my daughter figure herself out so she doesn't end up lost? Really all it was, Wes, was I just lost just lost, didn't know what to fucking do, didn't know how to do life. So I was figuring out how to do life. And step by step, I found um, a business in human design. And when I mean business, part of the design is just a big chart. Like if someone that's listening were to go look up human design, um, you're going to see a huge chart that's like really overwhelming. And it, it's got all these numbers and colors. And Okay, hold that. I want to come to that. Cause I do want to, I want to know more about that and then how you monetize it. Cause that's important, but, yeah. but could anyone else have helped you along that time? Could a neighbor, me, a cousin, a best friend, 
you know, oh. did, did you isolate yourself? Did, were others looking around saying, hey, you know, what's Danielle, interesting? Like, like, holy shit, how much wine are you drinking? Hey, stop calling me, asshole. I mean, no, none of my good group of friends said anything. Why? Well, because I you really I want to go deep that. on it. I'll tell you why. I I, I do, but I, I I like from a distance. I see you know Michael Jackson, Prince, Whitney right. Houston, Amy Whitehouse. I mean, I'll, on and on and on. I'm like, like the assholes around. They were just enabling because they wanted the money and they let these people just kill themselves. Yeah, you know. But they had a vested interest because I, I feel like, and again, I'm on the outside looking in. I just feel like it's the entourage. They don't want to kill the 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 golden goose yet. The, the ironic thing is they literally kill the golden goose because yeah. they don't step in. Whereas you and me, we're just normal people. Okay, is anybody going to step in? <clears throat> yeah. So was it just too uncomfortable? Like, why, why don't people? Because we went through this when we moved here. We moved here December of of 2004, 18 years, my birthday, April of 2005, my brother-in-law comes to the house. So skinny, so stinking drunk. Uh, he, he probably had less than six months to live. Yeah. And he, he came to my house. So we always remember cause it's my birthday and just slobbering drunk. And my wife's cousin, his cousin, she'd had her own issues. She recognized that she left, took him to a freaking hospital and got him and they couldn't take him that night. The next day we got him into treatment and he's yeah. been clean ever since, you know, got remarried, two more kids, you know, thriving. Yeah. Cause somebody intervened and said, wait Some, a minute. We're this like, is, yeah, this is not good. Yeah. Uh, it's time to have the uncomfortable conversation. Get your ass in the car. We're going right. Yeah. Did you not have that? Well, I would say my sister at one point said, what, is going on like do you want to lose your home and your fam like your children or is that what it's going to take that was one conversation but i can say like the friends who you think are your friends you play a role in their life like i'm fun to hang around i am the life of the party i fit in that story of the group the friend group like it's more uncomfortable to say, hey, wait a minute, that's not really healthy for you if it affects you and takes something away from you. Yeah. Right. I couldn't wake. Part of my waking up was I can't play the role in your story anymore. I can't yeah. be the friend that you want to have around because she's the life of the party because and I even I've had a friend say to me, like, you used to be like, like, if you can see my arm, like the lever yep. of here's a 10 you used to be here now you're here yeah and i want you to be here and in that moment i thought wow i am really just someone in your story i'm not really one with my own family right and you know what's interesting is these friends i'm talking about they both lost their husbands like they died and here I am rebuilding my life and my husband comes back into our family. And no, there's nothing. There's silence, radio silence. Not how did you do that? What's going on? How are you? this, this Danielle and this Danielle don't match. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Instead, instead the comments were, um, Aren't you sick of your family? Mm. Aren't you sick of that's that's a small place to be with five people. Mm. And it makes me like choke up because I'm like. I I would live in an 800 square foot home and be with my family <laughs> right any day of the week. Yeah, I'm lucky I have this opportunity to do this with my family. No, yeah. like we said before we hit record, right? I got I could make more money. I just, I like being home. People are like, you have seven kids. You should travel. I'm like, I like being home, sleeping in my bed with my wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And my eight-year-old that still comes in the room and wakes us up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, to I don't me... like that as much, but hey. You know? <laughs> no, I could do without that. Yeah. You're even eight, our 17-year-old, she still comes in at night and like lays with me. 
And I see it from the perspective of like, I've, I lost my mother from, at a young age and I've watched my good soul hearted best friends lose their husbands. Di they're died. Mm -hmm. And I get this opportunity. I will eat it and milk it every minute of the day. To me, right. a successful business and thriving, right? Like the opposite of like being in the rock bottom is my business provides me the opportunity to live this life with my family. It doesn't take it away. I don't have to, I don't have to create another life for my business where I travel to get away from the family. Like that doesn't make sense to me, period. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so let's go back to that, the human design. So you found this huge chart and numbers and blah, blah, blah. Cause I was saying like, how, how'd you make that transition right? Yeah. In, 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 into a business? So you said like you, yeah. You found it. It was like big, overwhelming. Yeah. So I learned how to read it. I just spent my time, <laughs> learned how to read it. And then I started helping other women learn how to read theirs. It's pretty big. Human design is pretty big in like the spiritual self-development metaphysical world. And it's becoming bigger. It's, it was, it's very, it's on the rise. Like it's not, you know, like everyone knows astrology, but nobody really knows human design quite yet. And so I started helping other women do that. And then what I was finding was at the end of these readings, women were like, okay, but then what do I do with this? Now that I know all this about me, this little chart on the internet knows me better than my mother knows me. What do I do with it? So I developed a, like a one-on-one -on -one coaching. I was like, well, I don't know about, I'm not a coach. I'm not certified in being a coach, but I can help you figure this out. And so I just opened up spots for people to work with me and they came. What a, how do you know, right? Coincidence. They started coming, they started coming. And then it just formulated into my, um, well, it formulated into the Wealthy and Aligned brand is what it came into. And I found a process where in eight weeks I can help women figure, figure themselves out and figure out what they want to take into their business. And yeah, that's where it started. And that's, that's what's put us on this trajectory now. Um, uh, do you only work with women? So right now I only work with women, um, but my boys have come into the brand. So Noah and Jaden and well, Garrick now is a COO, but we are opening up to men where Jaden and Noah are consulting with men. Yeah. Um, so I love talking about pricing, right? Because people, mm -hmm. when they start, always undervalue themselves and then slowly start to charge more. Either it's from demand or, you know, you're just wiped out. You're like, holy crap, <laughs> I need to yeah. raise my prices so I can sleep. Um, <laughs> how did you determine your pricing and, and like what would be your advice for somebody if they're doing their own consulting, coaching, training, and you know, how did you just wing it? Is it just trial and error? Yeah. Well, in the beginning, I looked to see what other people were charging for a similar human design reading. What are people charging? And I was like, okay, I'll start there. Um, and then I very quickly learned there's an energetic around people paying attention for what they pay for. <laughs> and I'm not about spending my time on anyone for any reason, if you are not paying attention to me, it is like my biggest pet peeve. So I rose my prices over and over and over again. And I started seeing a caliber of show up, a caliber of discipline in these women. And when I went and took it into one-on-one -on -one coaching, I started at 2000 because that's what everyone was charging. I just thought, okay, I'll start there. And I noticed very quickly the same energetic of, some people were showing up really like on it. They wanted more. And other people were like, eh, it's like, like, like two grand was like 20 bucks to them. They could take it or leave it. So I did a little trial where every six ideal clients that came through, that means ideal clients means for me, you pay on time, you show up on time, you take this information and you do something with it in time. And I took every six every for every six people that i closed right the objections were not like victimy <laughs> they were like actual questions 
And then I raised my prices and I went up a thousand. Then I did it another six times and I went up 2000 until I maxed out on um, my one-on-one time at 8,000. And I mean, it sold out then. And that's right. when I decided to create the formula. Yeah. How were people finding you? Literally on my Instagram bio through my podcast, like people would listen to my podcast. And I started like, I started my podcast hoping somebody was going to listen. I had no marketing skills or, you know, how do you hashtag it and SEO it? I had no idea. I was just like, I'm just going to record this shit and put it on a podcast. And (laughs) I've been doing it for, well, it's been a little over a year and where it's a little over 63,000 downloads. So pretty good for not knowing what you're doing and just, you know, having some tech help here and there. And Hey, who cares about the downloads? It's the customers. That is the truth. Right. Cause yeah. I, I talk to people all the time. Like I need more web traffic. I'm like, so I love, I love tweaking people. Right. I'm like, you want more traffic? You want more leads? Well, yeah, I want more leads. Like, you want more leads? You want more qualified leads? Yeah. Of course, I want qualified leads. You want more qualified leads or do you want more sales? Yeah. You know, and then they see where I'm going with this, right? I'm like, you're asking all the wrong questions, dude. You know, it's like, yeah. let's have a real conversation. Let's use words that mean things and let's, let's mean what we say. Yeah. Then we'll figure out where the issue is. Then I can right. figure out if I can help you or not. Cause maybe you got an issue I can't help you with. Yeah. You know? So you got to. So yeah, 63,000, 63 million. I mean, as long as. Right. Yeah. One of the things I did do from the very beginning, because I was noticing that, because, you know, um, I just had a link in my show notes. I was like, book a call to work with me. Start there. And I was attracting people that were really wanting to work with me, but they didn't have any money and they didn't have um, really the, the commitment I was looking for. And I started an application process. And I just made them fill out this application before they even got on the phone with me. And then I decided, do I want it from based on what I'm reading? Do I want to get on the call with this person? Does this seem like something I can help this person with? So I made it almost a reverse thing where they're like, tell me why you want to work with me. Tell me why you need this in your life. Yeah. Sell me, sell me on taking your money. Yes. (laughs) It's such a, a flip, right? Role reversal. It just blows their minds, but it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I've done this for years. I've got a thing called my IPA, my initial process assessment. And I, I, I took this from uh, when I moved here in 04, it was because I was working with a tech company and I covered the West coast. And so that helped us get out here from Texas. And back then we had a thing called a try and buy. Like when I showed up, cause it was, it was complex. It wasn't complex technology. It, it was a, a new format. So it was blowing people's minds, but it worked the same as any other computer. <clears throat> so, but my company back then would just ship it to you for free for a month, let you play with it. And then if you liked it, you could try and you could try it and then buy it. And I was like, Oh, hell no. <clears throat> I started charging for the try and buys. I was like, it's 1500 bucks, you know? And I said, we're going to send an engineer out. He's going to carry this thing out with white gloves. He's going to install it, train you on it, show you all the shortcuts, then answer all your questions for a month. Yeah. Cause we knew like once you install it, it was just a computer. Right. Cause I was like, look, here's the deal. I cannot charge you for this and we're going to ship it out. And it's not going to be a priority. It's going to sit on your loading dock for 30 days. Then I'm going to call you. You're going to avoid my call for about a week because you're embarrassed. You didn't yeah. get to it. Then maybe after two weeks, we finally have a come to Jesus meeting. And then you might install it or you'll just get frustrated and ship it back. And either way, we wasted our time. Yeah. Right. But I also knew because our equipment was more expensive. So if you couldn't spend $1,500, you couldn't spend 50000 Yep. Right. And so getting those, these little baby steps. So my, my IPA, my initial process assessment did the same kind of thing, charge $200 and $400 and $500 and $800 and, and brought it back down, but 750 now it's $1,500. So it's like the right people I want to work with will pay that money. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
because because we got to get to know each other because most people in my realm are like trying to sell some mega mastermind some 12 month engagement fifty sixty thousand dollars it's like i don't know you because i go yeah. from i go from a free call to a paid evaluation to 90 days then a year yeah you know and a lot of people will stop at 90 like hey we got we got shit done or something like you said a lot of times they don't apply what i say yeah yeah and i'm like i'm like i don't want to keep taking your money right because you're not gonna have anything good to say about me and it's all gonna yeah. be my fault even though like you got my <laughs> cell phone i I, i've take i've been on vacation i've been sick i'm like somebody's in a jam it's like call me i, I will help you like my people will if they need help i will help them yeah right Unfortunately, that's rare, but I have taken calls on vacation. I have taken calls when I'm sick. Ah, oh, Wes. When they need it, right? Yeah. But people don't abuse it, right? If if they're if they're just needy, like yeah, you're gonna go to voicemail. But <laughs> but the application, the IPA, I know going into it, these are good people. Yeah. We're not gonna abuse the access. Yeah. One of the things that I we just because up until March of this year, it's just been me doing this business. It's just been me. And there's been such a demand created. And it's all one-on-one -on -one coaching or you do group coaching? Well, so just... now it's group. Okay. In the beginning, it was just me. And I was booked out for three months and you had to do the application. And it was just me going through the application and figuring it out and doing all the admin. And then when the boys came in, the family came in, Noah immediately saw that there was a better way to do it. And that's when I created the formula, which the formula is a standalone. So the formula is everything I did with my private clients online, on demand, lifetime access, you get it all. And that we do like a monthly live coaching for that one. So I'm on there live once a month for those people who come in every, whoever is coming in, they get access once a month to these coaching calls. And um, we are trying a mastermind, which is weekly, coaching around this information just because the formula is so new human design is so new i don't know what 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 things will come up for these people now going through it without me one on one so we're our funnel is growing to like what you were saying try me out for a while like we're released this masterclass bundle and try me out for a while and see if i'm your thing and if i am your thing then get on the train to go to the next stop <laughs> sure yeah yeah cool very nice well we are over an hour look at that yeah well this was fun see what you do to me are, yeah are did, you using did, that human design on me or did you <laughs> hypnotize me yeah well do we do you think we can we answer one more question you think your reader your readers hey this isn't a I reading keep, i keep going so you go well what do you think is Oh, this is a good one. I'm going to ask you something. In my I'm the work, sales whisper. This is my podcast. I asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> In my work with women, the hardest thing for women to do is to sell. Why do you think that is? I don't know if you work with men only or women too. Oh, but, oh. I, yeah. I've had I've had training live courses with just women. It, it was just coincidental, but that's who that's who showed up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So first of all, most people are bad at selling. Well, I don't mean okay. bad. They literally no. don't want to sell. No, I, I know most, most are bad. Most don't want to sell. Yeah. Most misinterpret what selling really is. First of all. Okay. Second of all, despite what the interwebs want us to believe men and women are different um and our our approaches to business and life are different <clears throat> you know women just in broad strokes women are more amiable more nurturing right your body is literally built to nurture life yeah right and so that's you, you exude that as well in your persona and in, in your actions. And so, and, and you see it and it's unfortunate, but it just is like when, when a woman is strong and, and determined, well, she's bitchy, she's yeah. bossy, but 
And the same guy is like, well, he's just determined and goal oriented. Okay. We know that is a common perception and a nurturing, empathetic human doesn't want to be perceived that way. Ah. Okay. So, so they will. And because when I, so I just had a call with a guy. So I'll do this with you. And I, in, in a live event, I'll write a word down. I fold it up on a piece of paper and I'll give it to somebody in the front row. It's like, I'm not touching it, but I'm like, when I say the word, Danielle, when I say the word salesman sales, what adjective springs to mind? Give me some adjectives for Oh, selling. you want me to give you one? Yeah. Service. Give me an adjective. Okay. Is that an so adjective? <laughs> sure. Good enough. Okay. So, um, so you, you are in a positive frame of mind and you think that's what I want you to say, but what does the, what does the common person? Okay. When I say, Oh, uh, like back before I knew what this was. Okay. Oh. Back before I knew what this was, was I would say like shark shark, like, like, Give me another used, word. Used car salesman. Used car um, salesman. There's one word I'm looking for though, because it always comes in a bigger group. Sleazy. Sleazy. You're on the right track. The opposite of pulling. Know. The opposite of pulling. The what's opposite. the opposite of what's the opposite of pull? Stop. Push. Push. Pushy. Pushy. Got it. <laughs> right, but it's all all these negative. Pushy. I, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I always write pushy and it, and it always comes up, right? But so negative, sleazy, car salesman. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what we perceive as selling. And nobody wants to be perceived as pushy, sleazy, car salesman, aggressive, manipulative. Yeah. yeah. That's what we think selling is. That is not what professional selling is. You are a professional salesperson. You are not pushy. You are not sleazy. Right. You're not manipulative. You're not aggressive. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's what they think it is. So I am always changing people's minds because you'll, you'll, you'll meet people and they'll give you a business card and they'll say account executive, business development manager, all these soft, fluffy words. I'm like, Oh, you mean salesperson? Like, <laughs> yeah. Everyone is a salesperson. Why Everyone. Are, why are we hiding? It's like a surgeon saying, you know, skin cutter opener I mean, yeah. what? oh surgeon like why are we hiding this yeah. term so that's the long answer right people they misconstrue what it is and just the differences in the sexes women do they they have to be a little more diligent in how they go about it to avoid the tendency of men and women. Oh, that's just a bossy bitchy. So it's just, you know, you got to be aware of that. But once yeah. they know what it really is, you're a salesperson, you're a professional salesperson, you know, and, and you're, you're doing good things, you know, salespeople find needs and fill them. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. A big part of uh, the way I teach women to do business is stop caring about what everyone else thinks about you and start going care more about serving and helping someone else than you care what someone else thinks about you selling mm -hmm. and that's that's like a hiccup that it literally keeps women in the same position yeah. that they're in when they start for years well you mentioned it your friends saw you, you fit this mold. You were comfortable for them. Yeah. Yeah. You're my bowling buddy. You're my, my wine Wednesday buddy, whatever. Yeah. It's the old crab, right? Crab tries to crawl out of the bucket and the other crabs pull you back down. Yeah. You know, and, and we think things can't be the same, but we do need to see the bigger vision. Somebody has to help us see above the horizon right and know there's a different potential yeah out there otherwise i just you know like we really are the average of the five people we hang out with yeah 
you know, if that's all that you see, like when I, when I got stationed here, I was stationed at March air force base, 94 to 95. That's when I met Shannon at a country bar in San Bernardino. <laughs> um, but I moved my little sister out. She was living in Orlando. She had a tough time with our parents' divorce and uh, she's three years younger than me. So I was, uh, so I got, so I was 24, she was 21. Um, and saw the error of her ways, right. And was trying to get squared away, but she couldn't, she, she couldn't easily because she, you know, she was young, no education. She's smart, right. Can hustle, but, uh, she was just hanging around with a bunch of crabs, right. Trying to pull her down. So like pack mm -hmm. your shit, right. She sold everything, came over with a suitcase, yeah, you know, and never left. I <laughs> ended up getting yeah. married, a couple of kids. Now they left. Now they're in Dallas. So I love, I go out there and see them. But uh, sometimes you, you, it's hard to change your surroundings, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, one thing, I think you were trying to pull it out of me, but I didn't catch it. I did have to hire coaches and mentors. I had to spend money to find those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of those asking, people yeah. were around me. I was right. like, how are other people doing this? Like, there is no one around me with these big dreams and big, like, aspirations from, like, wanting to get out of where I am. Nobody's doing this shit. So I had to hire people. You have yeah. to hire people to help you do the things that you're uncomfortable doing for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you'll get there quicker. Right. And, and sometimes you might not get there at all if you don't, cause it's like, why try to do it alone? You know, if somebody else has done it and they can show you the a shortcut, Yeah, you know, and it's not necessarily shortcuts, probably the wrong word. People take a co negative connotation, but it's like, can show you the proper way that will save you a lot of wasted time and energy. Yeah. And a lot of it for me was like, am I doing this right? Like, is this supposed yeah. to, is there supposed to be a lot of rejection? Yes. Yeah. They're supposed to. Okay. Then I'm, I, at least I'm doing it right. Like I'm not doing little tweaks I, here and there. Yeah. Perfect. I always use the analogy of golf, right? When I don't golf as much anymore, back in the day, I was pretty good. Um, but when I, but even now when I do go play here and there, my absolute worst shots are when I'm in between clubs and I'm not, it's like, okay, do I, you know, do I hit like a, a really hard eight iron or a really easy seven iron, you know, like I'm kind of in between and then I'm not convinced and do this half-ass swing that I manipulate in the middle of the swing, which is the absolute worst thing to do. And you just flub it. Right. Cause you, cause I wasn't convinced I couldn't get after it with intensity and purpose, Yeah, you know? And I think that's why it's like, Oh, I'm going to go, do a podcast. Oh, well, uh, I'm going to write a book first. Oh, uh, I should do a live event. Oh, I need to master Facebook ads. Oh, TikTok is really popular now. And then you look around and you're like, that poor person, they're tired and they got shit to show for it. Yeah. You know, even if, okay, TikTok's wrong, but you, you go all in on it and you learn video and lighting and sound and and editing and jump cuts and whatever, oh, but it's wrong. Okay. That applies to YouTube. So now your YouTube learning curve is just cut in half. Oh, that's not right. Oh, it's better for Snapchat. Okay. You're going to learn. Yeah. Right? Go, go hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, well, my whole but, thing is if you're, if you want to be somewhere that you haven't been, you have to, decide first of all that's where you want to go and then there's no option you don't yeah. get you don't like one day go i want that thing really bad i want that lifestyle that the million dollar year i want all that and then the, in tuesday because it's raining say yeah i don't it's uncomfortable and i don't want yeah. that it doesn't work that way yeah that's where the mentors and coaches you know say just shut up and do the work yeah and that's <laughs> why you have to pay because you'll show up different when you pay oh for yeah sure. <laughs> amen and uh because you're right like like my buddy i i would slow play him because he would always have these questions and if i answered right away that he would ask 12 more and but finally i told him dude i literally told him every week you got a new question and you've never bought shit from me Told him straight up, I'm like, 
I, this is what I do for a living. And you ask me all the time for free advice. Why are you doing, it, giving free it, advice to people it, when you have a whole brand that oh, yeah, you can exactly. send them to? Exactly. I told him, I'm like, dude, this is exhausting. And he yeah. finally bought something. And he finally bought something, right? <laughs> so, I mean, we have a personal relationship. He's a good friend. I've helped yeah. him go to church. And, and he's sincere. He's searching for yeah. business ideas and money is tight. But finally, it's like, hey, look, I'm, you know, the cobbler's kids have no shoes, right? Like, I'm, I can sometimes yes. not apply my own shit to myself, right? So I'm not perfect. Yeah. I'm just very close to perfect, but, I, <laughs> but not, not quite. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but I, yeah, I finally said, dude, buy something from me. <laughs> I can't keep doing this because you're not listening anyway. I mean, yeah. so I, I, I said that exact thing, right? And he's gotten a little clarity, gotten a little bit better. So yeah, charging people is not a bad thing. It helps them. It makes them decide what's worth their time and energy. Yeah. So, you know, jump in, raise your prices. Uh, it's all good. I, I tell people all the time, like a, a dramatic example when I'm working with them. I'm like, okay, if you doubled your prices and lost half of your customers, is that a win or a loss? Yeah. Okay. And, and some, they'll, they'll want to game it a little bit. I'm like, okay, look, dude, sure, sure. It's nice to have a lot of happy customers. It's like like spreading seed far and wide. They can talk about you and more referrals, whatever. How many of those are you getting now anyway? You know, but I'm like, let's just stick with me, right? Like if you, so now you're, you're working half as much because you have half the customers, but you're making the same amount of money. Isn't that a victory? Yeah. You know, and get them kind of nodding. And yeah. Stuff. I'm like, let's, let's continue to pull that thread. Yeah. Where that's mindset stuff. That's like your mind is yeah. so it's got to be this way in one way before you realize work smarter, not harder. Nope. Nope. Yeah. 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 But, and, well, and that's where mentors and coaches help, right? Those that have been there before you, they, they've already been over the horizon. They're like, yeah, keep going. Yeah. There's no sea monsters. Go. Go that yeah. way. It's okay. Yeah. Not only are there no sea monsters, the sea monsters are behind you. So stop stopping. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you've read, you. have you read Think and Grow Rich? Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's like rule number one. Find someone who has done it and be in their energy. Be in their yeah. shit. Figure it out <laughs> because someone yeah. else has done it before you. Funnels. It's like Noah just got into this Russell Brunson and I just found him and I am devouring his business strategy. And we're like, this, this is the magic Heidi key. Like it's a book for 20 bucks. Anyone could go make a million dollars a year. Anyone just by reading the books that you paid for. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> it's no secret. <laughs> Wes, thank oh, you so man. much for having me. I do have to hop off because I notice it is after four and I do have to do uh, an email. But hey, we got to plug you. We got to plug you. So I'm linking everything, danielleiman.com slash money meditation. So if you're yeah. listening to the podcast, scroll down, click the link. Your podcast is Wealthy Aligned by Human Design. We're also linking to that. So uh, yeah, I, the cool. money meditation is good for if you're just learning how to meditate but you want to take it deeper, even if you're a, a solid person in meditation, that would be a good way to connect to source energy and figure out what the heck's going on with me and why can't I find my way to money. And the podcast is really good. I mean, I don't know if you're into human design, if you're, if you found this, if you're listening to this podcast and human design is here's this crazy lady speaking about human design and it's piquing your interest because you're interested in astrology or the, the I Ching. I don't even know if that metaphysics, anything, then this is something you want to look into. And the podcast is a good place to start because taking this kind of information into your business is a game changer. So those are some ways. And then I'm on Instagram at the wealth code coach. Those are some places people can connect with me um, and learn more about how to use human design in their business. All right. Sounds yeah. good. 
Danielle. Thanks for well, coming. Thank on the show. you so thank much, you. Wes. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Have a good day. Bye. There you go. We did not hold anything back. Dove right in, peeled everything back, looked at the um, the ugly truth of some things, and then handled it, right? She took care of business. Wherever you are, it's your fault. Amen. So check yourself before you wreck yourself, as we used to say in the military. Maybe you need to check up from the neck up. Um, so I'm glad she got her life together. I'm glad she's helping others. Uh, I don't know a lot about that. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, still got the cough. A month plus into this. Oh, my gosh. This human design. Uh, I'm more on the traditional faith-based Christianity, Catholicism. Um, but I think she's helping people. And, um, you know, I'm glad to see her family get back together. And um, I'm glad that she is so open and honest with uh, what has happened. You know, like we said on the show, a lot of people are going through a lot of things. Uh, there's probably everybody has something going on, you know, to some degree that's just not pleasant. So just consider that uh, when you get ready to hop somebody's butt, um, maybe count to 10. Uh, some people maybe count to five. All right, but give them a, give them a second to breathe. Give yourself a second to breathe. Uh, but if it's yourself, right, not doing what you know you need to do, get you some accountability, mentorship, whatever, mastermind group. Um, you can start one, right? If, if it's too expensive for you, then lead one. The teacher always learns more than the students, but, but get you some of that. Go join 12 Weeks to Peak, 12weekstopeak.com. It's free. It's an accountability thing, uh, but find you some help, okay? My life changed when I hired my real estate coach back in like 2002, and I hired a sales coach in two, late 2005. Uh, well, I joined his program. It started in early 06. Then I hired him, became his first licensee in 2006. To this day, we're still friends. Changed my life. So wherever you are, it's your fault. And the sooner you recognize that and admit it and start acting accordingly, then your life will change for the better. There you go. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll go sell something. <laughs>